Hey everybody and welcome back to Everything Tech and today we're installing Windows 8.1 in VMware Workstation. Before we get started you want to make sure you have a few things ready and that is a disk containing Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 or an ISO file again containing Windows 8 or 8.1. Now if you don't have an ISO file or a disk containing Windows 8.1 I'll show you how you can download it directly from Microsoft and the other thing you need is a product key. Now if you don't have an in a Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 install disk or ISO file you can find the ISO file which, which will work in this instant very well by just googling Windows 8.1 ISO and usually the first link is the Windows 8 ISO dash Microsoft that's the link you want to click on when you click on it it takes you to this website here and this website will give you some basic uh, basic rundown of what you're gonna need to install Windows 8 and some system requirements if you want to make sure that Windows 8 is gonna run really well on your computer or on the virtual machine you may want to check out these uh, system requirements here in the website where you download the uh, Windows 8 ISO which I will link down below in case you want to link directly to it you're gonna see this little button here it says download tool now that's gonna download the media creation tool that's what it's called it's a uh, 1.41 megabytes in size so it should download fairly quickly so as you can see here as soon as I clicked it it downloaded but it may take some time depending on your internet speed so we're gonna go and open uh, the program here it's gonna ask me if I want to use my com let the uh, application want to make changes to the computer you select yes I'm not sure if you managed to see that window there we're gonna go ahead and close the, the web browser here and in the application here the media creation tool it's gonna ask us for a language now you can select any language you want I'll be using English for the United States because that's the version that I have but you can use any version you want and as for addition I have the Windows 8.1 Pro so if you are going to use a product key for Windows 8.1 or Windows 8 you want to make sure you use a product key that goes with your version or use the version that goes with your product key so I'm gonna go ahead and download the Pro version in 32-bit architecture mainly because my computer uh, vir virtual virtual box or VMware workstation actually doesn't support or it doesn't allow 64-bit operating systems mainly because there's something that I have to change in my motherboard which is just fine I'm not really going to bother with changing settings in my motherboard so I'll select the 32-bit just so I can get the installation going so we're gonna click on next and it's gonna ask if you want to use a USB flash drive or an ISO file we're gonna select ISO file of course but if you want to make a USB flash drive with Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 for this matter and you want to use that to install it on a separate computer you can make your USB flash drive. All you have to do is just click on flash drive. Since we are going to download the ISO file, that's what we're going to click on here. And we're going to click next and it's going to ask you where you want to save it. I of course have the pro version in both 64 and 32 bit already downloaded for the convenience, but this is where you would select where you want to store it. If you want to store it on a separate hard drive or you want to store it in your documents, you can do so through here and it would begin downloading. When you do click save, it's going to give you an estimated time on how long it's going to take to download the operating system of course this is all dependent on how fast your internet is I'm gonna go ahead and quit and this is where we actually install the operating system well actually first we gotta configure it and if you in the workstation here let's say you accidentally erase the home tab to get the home tab back all you do is go to tabs and click on go to home tab when you click on go to home tab it's going to uh, take you directly to the home tab so you can create a new virtual machine now you don't have to have the home tab to create a new virtual machine you can always do command N or not command N control N and that's going to uh, bring up the virtual machine wizard or you can always go to file and new virtual machine and that's how you would do that and we're just gonna click on create a new virtual machine and we're gonna do a typical installation mainly because I'm new to VMware workstation and if you want to do custom you can do so but we're gonna be doing typical for this installation so we're gonna click next and if you're going to be using an installer disk, this is where you would click here and it would read your DVD drive. Of course, I have a driver disk in there for my motherboard since I just reinstalled Windows 10 due to a problem. I don't have the disk. I have the disk with me, but I'm not going to use it because it's a 64-bit version of the operating system. So that's not what I'm going to use. Instead, we're going to click on installer disk image. Now, you can use installer disk if you're going to use a disk. But because I am using an ISO file, that's what I'll be uh, clicking here. So we're going to click on browse. If we select the Windows 8 Pro, it's going to tell me that it's Windows 8.1 x64, meaning the 64-bit uh, operating system, which will not work with my computer. So I will go back in and select 8.1 32-bit, and it's going to say Windows 8.1 detected. 
and it's going to use easy install. Basically what this means is you're going to give it a name on the next screen and you're going to set how much memory you want for it and all that stuff. But when you boot into the operating system for the very first time, what it's going to do is skip all of the installation steps and just begin installing the operating system. So it's not going to ask you for a name. It's not going to ask you to sign into your Microsoft account or anything like that. It actually creates all of that stuff for you, which is a really great feature as it saves a lot of time. I know Parallels does it too, but I like to go through the whole installation step. But for the, in this case, I'll be using that easy install. So we're going to go ahead and click next. And this is where you would put in your product key. You can put a product key if you want. I'm not going to because I don't like putting it into the program. I rather wait and put it into the operating system. And this is where we select our version. I am using the 8.1 Pro. I believe this ISO contains both 8.1 and 8.1 Pro, which is why it's giving me those two options. So I'll install 8.1 Pro because that's what I have. And I'll name the computer Alex because that's what I want it to be named. And we're gonna go ahead and click next. And in next, it's gonna say you did not enter a Windows product key and that's okay. It's just gonna tell you that you're gonna have to enter that product key manually, which is just fine. So we're gonna click yes. And I'm going to name this Windows 8.1 so I know what operating system this is. And you can name it whatever you want. You don't have to name it Windows 8.1. You can name it anything you want. And here in this little next, um, next dialog box here, you're going to select the location for the virtual machine. So if you click on Browse, you can select where you want to store this uh, virtual machine. So I can store it in my Pictures folder if I wanted to. And it would save it there, but I'd rather keep it where where the software wants to store all the virtual machines. That way it never gets lost, and I know exactly where it is. And we're just going to click Next. And here is where you would select how big the hard drive you want on the virtual machine. I'm going to give it 128.0 gigs. I always add that .0 at the end. That way the computer knows it's gigabytes rather than megabytes. Trust me, I've had it before where I do put 128 and it thinks it's 128 megabytes of storage and that was in VirtualBox. Now the next uh, little tick tick box right here it's all optional based on what you feel or what you want if you store virtual disk on a single file it's going to store it as a single file just as the name implies but if you split the virtual machine into multiple files it makes it easier for you to move the virtual machine to another computer but it reduces the performance on very large disks of course i can use any of those two because 128 gigs isn't really a big a big hard drive but if you have let's say two terabytes of hard drive space but you want to dedicate 500 gigs or one terabyte of that storage to your virtual machine it's going to become slow so we're going to go ahead and click next after we select our option and here it's going to say ready to create the virtual machine but it gives you a basic rundown of all the features that uh, the virtual machine is going to have and here we can see that it's only going to give it one gig of ram and we're going to go ahead and change that by going into customize hardware and here in the first uh dialog box here or the first little selection here you can select how much ram i'm going to give it four gigs mainly because that actually yeah i'm gonna just gonna give, give it four gigs you can give it as much as you want so if your computer has 32 gigs of ram you can give it 32 gigs if, of ram if you want but i'm gonna give it four even though my computer has 16. next we're gonna go into processors i'm just gonna give it two cores of of a processor there you could select up to 16 processors and up to 16 cores I don't know if there's any computer out there that allows you to select that or a, a computer out there that it has those kinds of features, but if there is, great, you can use that there. And next we're going to go into display. This is in case if you have a graphics card that is higher than 1 gig. Mine is of course 1 gig, so I'm not going to go any higher. If you have, let's say, a GTX 1080 with like 8 gigs of RAM or something like that, this is where you would select how much RAM you want to dedicate to the virtual machine. And if you accidentally delete a, a option, like let's say here, I'm going to erase an option. Let's see. Printer. I'm going to re erase printer. You go to add and it's going to ask you to use the settings on your computer if you want to change them. And then you can go into this little window here, which you can use to add, add a printer again. But if you go into the add again, there may be some things in here that is aren't available on the list here and you can select those and you can uh, add them or if some of them are removed, this is where you would re-add them. So we're just going to go and get out of there because we don't need to. And if you are used to uh, using any of these other features that I didn't cover, you can use them. Of course, this is all based on personal preference. I'm not going to cover on these. Uh, if you want to use them, go ahead and give them a try, like USB controller. You want to use USB 3, 2, or 1.1. 1 
So we're gonna go ahead and close that because I feel like we're taking too much time with this and we're gonna go ahead and click on finish. Once we click finish, it starts creating a disk or a virtual disk that we can use to boot into Windows 8.1 and it starts installing on that virtual disk. I am currently running a custom built computer with one gig of processing power, actually one gig of graphics processor and stuff like that, 16 gigs of RAM. And here in this next dialog box, it's saying what the stuff that we can't connect to the virtual machine. I'll show you how you can connect to that stuff later. So we're going to click OK. And that's mainly because we can see the operating system start there. But I am running this on a real desktop computer. I'm not running this on a virtual machine as I usually would. I actually wanted to start using my desktop computer a lot more for, for filming videos like this, especially since using a virtual machine to install a virtual machine doesn't sound right to me. Anyway, back to the installation here. We're gonna I'll I'll teach you first how to how to go full screen and stuff like that. But if you wanna connect your flash drive to the virtual machine, and you can see here it jumped right into the installation rather than um process of personalizing your computer and stuff but if you want to connect your flash drive to the virtual machine all you would do is go to the VM tab and removable devices and this is all the stuff that was able to connect to your computer but you can see here that let's say the USB sound card for the microphone that I'm currently using it's not going to be connected to the virtual machine so this is where you would do it but you want to keep in mind that when you do do this it's going to disconnect that drive or that USB from the host computer so if you're working on something in the background and you want to jump into the virtual machine and do it it's going to disconnect it so make sure you save all your your stuff before disconnecting it that way you don't lose any any information but this is where you would add a a virtual disk not a virtual disk a USB or a CD drive to the computer and we're gonna go full screen right now but you're gonna see something weird when we do go full screen, you're going to see that there's uh, black bars along the edges here. And I'll show you how to fix that in just a second. But this is known as underscan. And to fix it in this version of, of VMware Desktop or VMware Workstation, you just want to go to View, Auto Size, and Stretch Guest. Now, you want to make sure you remember that you did this because later on when we do install the display drivers, it's going to look pretty weird. It's going to actually look the same as it does now except we cannot do 1080p and it's going to be widescreen but once we get to that step i'll let you know and if you do stretch to guest it's going to fill this screen as if you were actually doing this installation on your computer now you do see this black or not black bar this blue bar up at top here uh, you can get rid of that actually i just minimized the, the virtual machine there apologize for that but you can see this blue bar here and to get rid of it all you would have to do is i believe you click here and it just gets rid of it but it's still kind of there because you can see it right right along the edges here and we're going to actually get rid of that by clicking on view and jumping into exclusive mode and it's going to say if you want to get rid of or get out of exclusive mode just press the control and alt key in combination so we're going to go ahead and do that and you can see it's completely in the virtual machine there's no such thing as the other machine in this case you can't really go back if i press the windows key nothing's happening i'm actually pressing it right now until we actually do the control and alt and once we do control and alt and release the mouse from the virtual machine you can see here uh there we go with my my taskbar there or my start menu so we're going to go ahead and jump back into uh the exclusive mode as the installation is closing in on the finish line now, as soon as you boot into the operating system for the first time, or you load into the operating system, it's going to install something called VMware Tools. Now, this installs drivers that are necessary in order to connect most of the hardware on your computer directly to the virtual machine. So your mouse will work, keyboard, or any other keyboard you have connected, as you can see there. And now it's installing a display driver, so we can actually go into a full 1080p. Now, before I leave you, I want to make sure I leave you with the knowledge of knowing how to update your computer and two different ways of updating your computer but first let's get to the activation so we're going to go ahead and right click on the little window here the little windows logo and we're going to go to system in system it's going to say down here windows is not activated so we're going to click on this little button all the way over here and it's going to launch the little cog menu or the pc settings menu it's going to say enter a new product key here this is where you would enter that product key now this is a fake product key i'm just typing in a bunch of letters and numbers there's a one in a trillion chance that this is actually a product key but i can assure you it's not but this is where you would put in your product key and hopefully that would uh, activate your computer 
it says here to buy a product key but that key no longer or that button there no longer works so if you don't have a product key you may want to look online for a product key and you can look online for a product key for windows 8.1 i'm sure you can find it online somewhere just make sure it's a legit uh, product key and not something that someone else already used. It may be worth buying the actual brand new copy of Windows 8.1. That way you get the disk and the product key together and you don't have to use that ISO file like I did. And in order to update your computer, there are two ways. My favorite way is by right clicking again on the little windows here and you're gonna go into control panel system and security and then click on windows update now this version of windows update here is reminiscent of of that of in windows 7 which is why i like it i don't like the one that comes with the windows 8 where you have to go into your start menu and then pc settings update and recovery and you go into windows update here it's not the best uh, experience in my opinion if you want to use this one that's fine if you're used to using it that's okay but I like using this one here mainly because it's it's reminiscent of Windows 7 and that was my favorite operating system. And make sure you keep this virtual machine updated, especially if you're going to be installing Windows 8. You want to make sure you update at least up to 8.1 because that is a free update. And with that being said, thank you all for watching and see you all in the next video, which should be about Windows Vista or Windows XP uh, or Windows 10 for that matter. I think Windows 10 is coming up next. Then we have XP, and we may do Vista if I can find my installation disk somewhere. And again, like I said, thank you all for watching. See you all in the next tutorial.